Now, if you notice, I don't have enough room to put this adapter in there. Cool thing about this drill is over here on this side, there's a little bolt that you loosen. That goes down. So I can run that down all the way, tighten that back up. Ah! Now look at all that room that I have in there. Before we get started on the review of this Vivor Mag drill, I just like to say check the chapters down below here in the timeline. I recognize this video got a little bit long. So if you're looking for something specific about the drill, just look down there and then you can jump to whatever you want to. Well, YouTube, I just received a new Vivor Mag drill. It is the DA840 model. I chose this model because it is variable speed and reversible. And I think that is very important in a mag drill. We're gonna unbox this thing real quick and then we're gonna look at its features. Ah. That thing is a serious box. <laughs> All right, there's the coolant tank in there. A uh, couple annular bits here. There. A couple little annular cutters to get you started. This one happens to be a 40 by 30. But you're probably gonna wanna buy yourself a nice set of annular cutters because Two isn't going to get you very far, right? Okay, this is the bag full of the extra chuck and stuff. Yeah, that's the chuck adapter right there, which screws into the you know key chuck, so you can use regular twist drill bits. And they even claim you can do tapping with this, which I'm really excited about to try. So. Let's see, what is this laying here? Handles for the uh, the up and down function, and then and then your hex keys. There we go. There they're gonna chunk of wood in the bottom, make sure the mag drill doesn't fall out. That's pretty nice. That is, that is some serious packaging. And so the one thing I really want to point out about this drill, the reason I chose it is variable speed, forward and reverse. Nice. I have run into a little bit of glitch here on putting the handles into the height adjustment. Um, so this side over here worked just fine, no problems whatsoever. And I went to put the second one in and it bound up pretty good. Irk. But there is a bunch of paint jammed in the threads in here. So you might want to spend some time cleaning out the threads in this the first time you use it, it looks like. It looks like, you know, they don't cover up these holes when they paint it, so it's clear full of paint. There we go. That one works good now. That one works good. All right. Once your handles are on, uh, you might want to check the tightness of your gibs. If you don't know what gibs are on the dovetail, there's this little part here, the V part that gets tighter and looser, which is adjustable by these three screws on the side over here. You want to make sure that the drill moves up and down and that dovetail just fine, but there's no play in it. You need to find that sweet spot where there's no wiggle in the drill head here, but it moves up and down without having to really wrench on it. Now I have the uh, handle put together. Uh, I want to know if this handle is reversible. I have another mag drill that I've been using for years, and you cannot take the handle off of this side and put it over on this side. And that's really annoying because sometimes you're up against something and it's in the way or you can't reach it or whatever. So I want to see if this one is reversible. So I'm going to pop out this snap ring thingy there, E-clip, if I can. All right, so that comes out, that comes out. A little spacer there. And can't pull it out. Um, okay. Well, let's see if I run this all the way up. 
There's a notch there. Let's just try raising that up just a little bit. Yeah, where are we at here? Still hanging up. Still on the gear. Okay, there we go. Now raise that up. Ah, oh, it comes out. Okay. So I was catching the rack, the gear here on the back of this in that notch to get that out of there. These holes look the same. Let's see. So that was the spacer for this side. Came out of there. That fits over there on this side. That means this thing might flip over. That'd be really nice. All right, let's put this in there. Let's see. So I have to get the rack through that notch there. Uh, there it went. Whoop. Spacer. Yep, that works. That's a really nice feature. That's something that I wish my other mag drill had, and I'm really glad this one does. So, does the magnet work? Yep. The switch is lit. Can you see that? A lighted switch. Oh, jeepers creepers. Uh, yep, that works. So, push on the switch. Turn it to right. Nope. Let's grab some metal, I'll look around, see what I got for scrap pieces, and uh, we'll drill a couple holes. I wish I had this mag drill just a couple days ago because I just got done with an on-site call in which I had to drill uh, four holes in a three-point mount on a bale mover that I had to redo. So, yeah, it would been really nice to have this drill that day and put it through its paces. I'm just going to try one of the annular bits that they sent with it here. This is a so it's 40 by 30, so I'm going to grab my calipers just to make sure here. Yeah, 40's diameter. For English units, 40 is about 1.58. Mm. Sounded a little bit, uh, well, not great, but this is the max capacity this drill can do. And, you know, we're just in a little quarter inch metal hanging over the edge of the table here, kind of sits up in strange harmonics, but clearly it did it. My other mag drill that I've been using for years will not do this big of a bit at all. Um, it pretty much won't do anything over one inch and this is over an inch and a half it's basically an inch and nine sixteenths hole and it did it i mean it struggled i'm not saying it didn't struggle but it did it so hooray there and then just for comparison we're going to drop down to a half inch hole so you can get an idea of the difference in the horsepower required and the vibrations and stuff like that
think you can hear the difference there that that drill absolutely had no problem with a little half inch hole like that. And I should point out that thickness of material really doesn't matter. It's the diameter of the bit. It's not gonna take any more power to go through thicker material. It's just gonna take longer. Well, this is a one inch bit. That way you can hear the difference between the three sizes, you know. So basically inch and nine sixteenths, a little over inch and a half there. Uh, half inch and one inch. So there still might be a little bit of vibration because we're overhanging the table like this, but I think it'll be all right. using some of the power of the drill but you can tell that it's handling it no problem all right I'm gonna tap a hole um, I already tried this once and it was a spectacular disaster there you go because learning so do this again. First off, I'm going to drill 7 16 hole in this metal. Okay, I'm going to use the chuck and use a tap holder and then the half inch tap. So I got a lot going on here and uh, Put the chuck in first and then i'll show you a feature about this drill that is just absolutely fantastic and probably the feature that just 100 percent sold me on this drill all right so chuck is in there now if you notice i don't have enough room to put this adapter in there i don't even have enough room to put this tap in there so the cool thing about this drill is over here on this side there's a little bolt that you loosen. Now, watch this part right here. That goes down. So I can run that down all the way. In fact, I can even pick it up a little bit more. Tighten that back up. Ah! Now look at all that room that I have in there. Oh, that is fantastic! Yeah, okay. So now I'm gonna put this on the slowest speed. And I'm gonna hit on and off just like immediately. There we go. That's pretty darn nice. And you can, you know. Run more run a little bit more by hand if you need to. Reverse it and back that out of there. And there you go. You have a nice tapped hole. Let's uh, go get a bolt. Uh, let's see if it fits in there. All right, try this out. There we go. <laughs> now, of course, it would be a whole lot easier to actually use some proper weld and shank tooling. They actually make taps that have the three quarter inch weld and shank on the top of them so you can just stick it up in there and you don't need all this room and extra hubbub and whatnot. They also make uh, tap holders and a three quarter inch weld and shank and all that stuff. So there's better setups than this for tapping but just wanted to show you that with the variable speed and the reverse on it it is actually possible to tap and also this sliding head feature, which is 
just phenomenal. I actually love that. It's just so nice to be able to slide this head up and down and have a ton more clearance, you know? Like all that clearance. So much clearance. Nice. Ah, amazing. Well, this video ended up being more of just a test it here on the bench type of video. I really wish I would have had this thing two days ago because I did go out and do an on-site job in which I drilled a few holes and it would have been really nice to test this in a real world scenario. If you're interested in buying this drill, there is a discount code in the description below along with the link. Using that link will help me out just a little bit and that will help me make more metal fabrication videos that everybody wants to see. Also, clicking like on this video sure would be a big help. The more likes I get on this video, the more metal fabrication videos I can make. It really does help. Well, I don't know what else to say about this other than I am really impressed with this drill. It's a very good unit. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one.